Ladies and gentlemen, Mike TV performing his original song, My Bones Will Sing. One, two. I never wanted nothing, that's exactly what I got. The bills are all unpaid. And the groceries ain't been bought But I don't mind cause I survive on pretty melodies Songs they are my sustenance But I don't need to eat Oh, I will sing my way out of here Oh, I will sing my way out of here And when they come to look for me my bones, oh, they'll still be singing My hair is growing brittle and my teeth are getting loose My lungs are filled with fluid and my eyes are just no use I don't remember hunger, oh, it seems so long ago that I tasted something other than all the songs I know Oh, I will sing my way out of here Oh, I will sing my way out of here And when they come to look for me My bones, oh, they'll still be singing Oh, it's not so long ago that I was just like you Living as you do Oh, you know what I mean If you live to sing You gotta eat your dreams You gotta eat your dreams To survive song will soon be through But there will be another who will sing a song for you And don't you ever worry that he's choking on his dreams Cause you gotta learn to eat them if you really wanna sing Oh, I will sing my way out of here Oh, I will sing my way out of Hi, I'm Random Girl Singing here to welcome you to the Music Community Podcast, joined by my co-hosts Dan Drumstone and Doc Bizzle. Hey, and yo. this week Hello. we have Mike TV, otherwise known as Mike TV Live on Twitch. He's been doing music for over two decades, and he's going to share a lot of wisdom with us. So welcome, Mike. Thank you so much for being here today. Greetings and salutations. Thanks so much for having me. It's good to have you, man. Salutations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited. I, I, I've been, uh, I, I had just had a chance to kind of like listen to your previous podcast with the Eaglesons, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's, I, I really love that you guys are doing this. Well, we're really happy to have you. Um, a lot of people might not know it, but uh, Mike TV has actually been licensing his own music uh, into multiple projects, film and television projects. And uh, in addition to that, writing his own music for a very long time. He actually also organized uh, a panel at this most recent TwitchCon uh, about original music. And that was a really awesome presentation to be part of. I'm not sure if you guys had a chance to catch up on that, but uh, he really went into why original music is actually very valuable to be putting in live streaming. And so I'm hoping that you'll share some of that with us today. But uh, first, can you kind of explain with us when you started live streaming music? Is Twitch the first place you went to? Or No, I, actually, I started in 2010. It's funny, it was... You know, I kind of I kind of grew up as a musician uh, in an, uh, on in an, an indie rock scene on the east side of Los Angeles, and so you know when that scene got to the point where there was at least sixty people in the audience, we could definitely see oh this song's great, this song this song is not really resonating, you know, or this is a sort of a slow burn song. 
Um, and when that scene died, I needed, I, I was like, I need an audience to be able to really discern, you know, what songs resonate, what songs don't. And so I was like, maybe I can turn online and do that. And so I found, I was started with Ustream, um, and I started streaming, but I didn't do it. Uh, like, like I did, I would do it consistently for like a month and a half. Hey, hey these are all my new songs and, and kind of hardcore fans would show up and they'd be like, I like this song. And, and that w- it would allow me to kind of drill in and figure out what songs I wanted to put on the next record. And then I would, and then I stopped, you know, so I never really actually used it to cultivate and build a, 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 a significant audience, you know, which is of course, you know, like I I've done that multiple times where I've been just adjacent to the thing that's going to transform my life, you know, five or six years down the road. Ah, uh, gotcha. What about you guys? Did you ever stream prior to Twitch? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, Not I at all. The bit. thought didn't even like I didn't even know that it was it was a uh, an option, really. Yeah, I I did a little bit on um on Ustream and there was another service that was real similar. I think it was called Livestream, I think actually is what it was called. And the, no, 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 no. Mogulus is what it was called. And then they rebranded to like Livestream or something later. Um, but that was years ago and I put more pre-recorded videos on there than anything. I would show pre-recorded videos and chat with people that would show up, but it really wasn't much. I only did it maybe three times. You know, I didn't, I didn't see it as something that was necessarily valuable. I was just poking around cause it looked fun. So nothing like what Mike was doing. Mike, I think that's brilliant, man, to, to do that when you don't have an actual venue, go online, take your stuff on, mm-hmm. let, let people hear it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it and it worked out. I mean, it really did. It worked very well. You know, um, a, a lot of the, the so over that so that was basically 2010 to about 2012, and a lot of the songs that, like so there were there were about there were two or three full length records that came out in that time and some EPs and all of those songs were vetted in front of you know sort of my hardcore fans at that point. In time. It's, it's like a very uh, very cool way to to do pre production. You know, like get people's opinions or I yeah. bounce ideas around. That's yeah, absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. And that's, and that's exactly how, how it was used. You know, and, and it's, and it's sad. Cause I, I wish, I wish I had seen, you know, the, cause you know, I mean, I mean the, the one thing I love about Twitch right now, well, I, well, actually there's so much about Twitch. I don't think we should, we can unpack that right, right here, right now. But, but the, <laughs> um, but again, the thing is, is that like, it, you know, it's, it's amazing to me to see like the, just the tenor of the, the people that show up in the chat in the Twitch music community are dr- demonstrably different than, than what was showing up in, in, in Ustream. Basically, if I didn't know them, they were a troll, you know, and they were, they huh. were, gotcha. you know, and, and yeah, and they were, they were difficult to deal with trolls because they were literally hell bent on just ruining the, the stream. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So when, when and how then did you make that switch over the switch to Twitch, the switch over to the Twitch platform? Yeah. Uh, so that actually came about, I was, I was, so I'm affiliated with a, a show called Night Attack that actually they themselves now stream on Twitch, but they, um, uh, they have been podcasting since 2009, um, and, uh, and under a different name, but, but, and they had cultivated a very, very strong, um, you know, 10,000 plus kind of, uh, uh, podcasting viewer, ship and uh and and i so i would guest on their show occasionally and and we were talking about um and i was i just moved to austin and i was talking about the fact that like i was thinking about because i i didn't really have um access to my my sort of my my home base fan base um i was thinking about all right maybe i maybe i'll try doing the the live streaming thing and they had suggested uh twitch to me they but they were like you know but you got to be able to do it you know twitch is one of those things that's really about you know maintaining a presence for a long period of time. So you got to be able to, you know, pull off, you know, two, three, four hours. And I was like, no worries. I got that guys. And, (laughs) and so, yeah. And so, uh, and so I started streaming and again, I I was doing it intermittently and I was doing it the same way I was doing, I I was doing Ustream. I I started it just to kind of vet songs for, um, uh, for, for my newest record, which was death and which is my album death and taxes, which was my 2016 release. And, um, and it just, it, it just ended up being so much fun. I'm like, maybe I should f- try to figure out a way. It wasn't even at that point in time, it wasn't even something I was doing from a perspective of like, this is going to be a, a way that I can bring additional revenue to, into my, in, into my already dimin- ever, ever dwindling coffers. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> What's a revenue? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Please enlighten us. <laughs> Yeah. And so, you know, but, but it, it was just, it was so much fun and the community was such, was so, uh, you know, was so supportive and so embracing, um, you know, that I was like, I was like, I think I kind of want to, it's funny that in fact, my whole life has kind of been built around 
And as I get older, I realize that I, I want to get rid of all the things I don't like, all of the things that 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 bring bring stress and and make my life you know miserable. I'm going to get rid of all those and just hang on to the things that I really do like, and I'm just going to keep doing them. I'm going to keep trying to figure out ways in which I can leverage those to make enough money to to survive, you know. And so so that's so Twitch has been a really really huge um, uh, new part of that of that strategy. Right on. Who was the first person that you ever saw playing music on Twitch, Mike? You know, I, um, I don't, I don't know. Um, it, it was, so when I, so when I, so there's a Twitch staff member, uh, let me think, uh, I, th- I think it might've been Monty with, with scene of action music, but, it, or it could have been piano imp- impro man. Like, um, uh, so there's there's a there's a streamer, but she also works for Twitch. Her name is Fake Gamer Girl, and so when I when I, and she's she's married to one of the hosts of of the show Night Attack, and so when I mentioned that I was going to do, I was thinking about doing using Twitch as a platform. She and I basically got together, and she kind of talked to me about, well, this is sort of the this is sort of the ethos that you know that that uh, Twitch operates under, and so she turned me on. So it was, I think it was either one of those two because they were I think I think it was right around the time that Monty had become partnered. Or maybe it was maybe it was ACS a, a couple streams, but it was it was mm-hmm. it was one of those three because those were sort of the people that she was like, hey, you should check these guys out. They each of them do kind of what you do, and they do original music, and this is kind of you know. So Very I, cool. I think I think I checked them all out all, all out kind of right around the same time. But have you incorporated production into yours yet? Mostly, I've just noticed you playing your own songs per request. Yeah, and, and it's it's funny. I haven't, and and the and and part, the real reason why for me is is that like. Uh, um, like I think that like for me, and this is just the way I like to do things. Like like I, like because it's just me and an acoustic guitar. It's my voice, and I don't even have reverb. Like it's literally it's like yeah. the most raw. And the idea is is it, for me it's like because if the songs translate, if the songs work with just me playing the song with just an acoustic guitar and nothing else. If the songs resonate, then then I know that that like that. That everything else I add, all the other bells and whistles I add in for the production side, just add to the song. But I just want to make sure that like the most stripped down, bare, raw version of the song, if it, if it works, then I know it's a good song, you know. That's awesome. That's great. That, that's I brilliant. think that's great advice to um, to yeah. people wanting wanting to maybe try out some of their originals, man. Even, you know, turn the reverb off. Don't try to make it too polished. Just see if the song connects. Uh, I would feel uh, naked now without reverb. You know, like (laughs) what a spoiled generation of (laughs) online streamers where it's like, what? I have to turn the reverb down. (laughs) Yeah. And and, and it is, you know, and and it is one of those things where, I mean, and it's funny because, because people have, have have come to me and been like, Hey, maybe, maybe I should do, you know, an episode where I, you know, use my, cause I do, I've got a looping pedal. I've got the ability to add all that stuff. Um, and, and I, in fact, there are some songs that I don't play because they do require some, a little bit more production for me to pull off. And I'm like, oh, I'll just, I'll just play the, you know, all the others. But, um, but again, the thing is like, yeah, I, I just, for me, it's, it's just been, it's been really exciting to, to figure out, yeah, you know, even, you know, figure out inter- and interpret some of my songs that are big production songs in, into just an, and here's an acoustic guitar and me and the melody and the words I'm singing, you know, let's, let's see if it works. And, and it's, it's awesome when it does, you know. Well, you can reverse reverse that thought process, like even bands that are bigger and come out with their full production albums first, but then they'll release like an acoustic album. Yeah. And it, it's just, it, it works still. It's like, oh, this is even, this is just oh, yeah. as good, you know? And it's it's like that reverse engineering. And I'm sure a lot of the full production albums started off acoustic, just like what you're doing, you know? That's usually how the songwriting process goes, is just someone with an acoustic guitar in their living room, you know? And it's fun to hear how different versions can still yeah. be impactful. How and hands on are you oh. with it, though, with your production? Because you have very good production. It, was that was that addressed to me or? or yeah, you? yeah, oh. you, Mike. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's funny. Uh, the thing, I, I mean, yeah, I I uh, I do everything. Um, since I moved to Austin, I, I've I've basically done absolutely everything. So the the recording, the the engineering, the mixing, the mastering, uh, all the performances, absolutely everything. So. Um, and I've, I've made, I've definitely made uh, significant use of like, like I'm not a drummer. Um, so I, I, you know, I will, I, I literally build my, my drum beats. Like I think a kick would go here and a snare would go here. And, you know, so, so oh it, it, that takes me, that takes me, you know, it's a full day and a full eight or nine or 10 hour day of putting together each drum beat. But, um, and, and, and you know, when I listen to some of them, I'm like, oh, that's why, <laughs> like, I, I, it's an album that's already in stores. And I'm like, I could do so much better now, you know? Mike, but, uh, you have my number now. Give me a call next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and you know, but the thing is, is, is it like, um, but yeah, I, I love, I, I love reinterpreting my stuff. Like I like it when, when, you know, when we play live, I don't want to, I don't want to just recreate the record, right? You got to copy the record. Like for me, it's like, that's how you keep music dynamic. And, 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 and I definitely, I definitely can understand, I can appreciate, you know, the Bon Jovi's of the world that just want to recreate the record absolutely perfectly. So people get to go see and, and experience that music live the exact way that they fell in love with it. But, but that's just not my, for me, like I, I it's like, we got new people, we got new players, we got new people that want to inter- add their, you know, their perspective on the music. Sure, man, go ahead and do it. You know, let's see what, let's see what this new alchemical mix of players creates, you know? Um, but for the recording, yeah. And, and so that, and it's very funny for me because, uh, because a lot of people now that are actively engaged with my music, um, really know me through the Mike TV live, you know, uh, perspective and not the band. So when they go to the albums, they're like, yeah, I really like the record, but I really kind of prefer it just being you and an acoustic guitar. And I'm like, I'm like, that's awesome. You know, that's, you know, <laughs> and, uh, so, so in fact, that's why my next, my next project, I'm, I'm doing a 101 song album where I'm just Whoa. playing all of the... <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's all the song it's all the songs from uh, it's all the songs that get regularly regularly requested to my stream i'm just doing uh it's just doubled acoustic guitars but because they're double so it just sounds like a big full rich guitar sound and just one vocal you know which is which is basically what you get when i'm playing when i'm playing on my tv live that's awesome man. that's amazing i'm excited about that yeah inspiration yeah. people inspiration so what that's have kinda... you thought about incorporating your production into twitch and and kind of teaching others that way or do you think that that would kind of slow down your process um you, well, you know in fact I, I was thinking that i might want to actually put something together where i where i just kind of kind of create a song from on from scratch and kind of walk people through how i how i do it um i for me when i'm when i'm actively working on an album when i'm like the thing is, is that, like i have a tendency to I, I, you know, like I, I will rage and I'll be like, and I'll be furious and like, this is not working out right. Or I'll be, I'll, or I, I will, I like the thing is, is like, or I will play a part a hundred thousand times, even though I, even though I could just scoot everything, I could play it once and then just scoot the notes and make it, I will, I will like, no, I want to get it perfect. I want to get it live and get it perfect this one time, you know? Um, and, 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 and it's, and, and, and I know that might sound fascinating, but it, it definitely like, I think if I had an audience while I was doing that and, and beating like, like, you know, bashing my head against the wall, it <laughs> might make it a little bit more, you know, a little bit more, uh, painful. <laughs> <laughs> Could be distracting too. Yeah. You and know. that's, and, and the thing, and yeah, and that's, and that's why, why I was thinking like, it'd be fun if I went into a song, if I was like, I'm going to write a song on, on the stream and then I will bring it into Pro Tools and I'll show you how I, how I would take this acoustic song and turn it into a full-blown production. That I could definitely do because it would be, I, would, I would be looking at it from the perspective of I'm going to be doing this in front of an audience, you know. But yeah, you know, and maybe, and maybe, that's, a, maybe that's a good idea to just, to just to put together a little 10-song album, you know, where the entire thing is done, you know, live in front of people. That would be awesome. Where do you even start with a project like that? 101 songs. Yeah, like, well, because sometimes I'll have to record stuff and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to take forever. But 101 songs is That's a quite lot like, of songs. Where, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where do you even start with something like that? Well, it's funny. I, so I, I, uh, uh, so, you know, so I, I write, I write, you know, anywhere between 40 and a hundred songs a year. Um, yeah. and, and so, and so what I've been, so this last album I just put out, um, uh, which hit stores a, about maybe about a couple months ago, um, the, that album was me kind of going through all of my back catalog over the past couple of years and looking at the songs that didn't make it on albums, didn't make it on EPs are these decent songs. And I found, I found like 45 of them. I'm like, I'm like, these are totally great songs. So I, so I was like, I was like, I wonder how many songs I can put on. I've got my internet distributors is a company called TuneCore. And I was like, I wonder if they have a limitation on how many songs I can put on, on an album. <laughs> and, and they, and their, their limitation was 101 songs. <laughs> So I'm like, and, and so I'm like, challenge accepted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly that. It was exactly it. That was exactly my thinking. I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna put out a hundred one song record now, and so, just to push. It. And I and I know, and I and I'm a hundred percent certain that they were not anticipating, you know, that someone would put out like an album with with full like three and a half minute songs, you know, a hundred and one of them. I thought I figured they, they were thinking like, you know, guided by voices style. Like, here's a thirty second song, and here's a minute and one, you know. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's going to be, it'll be like a, a seven hour record. 
<laughs> so how long wow. are you going to spend recording each song, do you think? Well, th- well so that, that's the thing. So I, I've been doing them in batches. So I, I will record all the guitars. Because the good thing is, is it's, it's, just, it's just acoustic guitar. It's just the rhythm guitar. You know, I'm not adding any bells and whistles because I want it to be as close of a representation of what you're going to get on, the, on my, my TV live stream. Um, so I'm just so... So the thing is, so I, because I've been playing... I mean, that's one of the most amazing things about... Uh, about being on Twitch. And that's one of the things I, that's why I, I really want to encourage Twitch streamers, Twitch music streamers. Like you're playing, you're spending so much time playing the guitar. You might as well be spending a little bit of time writing songs and playing those songs. Cause you're getting such like, like even prof- I know professional musicians that do not get as much playing time as streamers on Twitch, you know, like, like people don't, you know, like, like there are guys that, that, you know, they, when they were younger, they spent their time mastering their instrument and then now, you know, and now they play their gigs, you know, and they come out and they play for a couple hours and they do that a few times a week and that's how they pay their bills. But they're not like, I mean, there are people streaming right now that are playing 20. I mean, they're, they're, it's Paul McCartney style, you know, a number of, of hours playing, you know, yeah. and that's, and that's awesome. You know, it's awesome. And so, um, uh, I, I got a little bit derailed. What was the question? <laughs> I asked you how long you were going to spend recording each song. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So, uh, so the thing, so yeah, so I, so basically, I, I, so you know, so I, so because I've been getting a lot of practice in, it takes me. I, I usually do uh, two or three passes on the left channel and two or three passes on the right channel, and then usually I've got you know, and I and I do everything to a click. So, so they they, they usually lay over, and they, and very often, very often, if they're not flawless, they're they're close they're close enough that I can just do a little bit of scooting, and and uh, you know, and everything sounds fine. Uh, Question though, will yeah. be will will you be using reverb? Um, <laughs> yes, and, and the thing is, is I so I use I use just enough reverb so that so that it, so that the vocals sound like they fit in the mix. So it's not yeah. I don't I don't I'm not going to be doing a lot of you know like I'll be using like like a medium sized room reverb. Like if, if you use yeah. you know if you if you know Pro Tools, I you know yeah. I'll, I'll probably be using their 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 actual built in plugin and just use a medium sized room just to just to make make it fit in the mix a little bit better. Yeah, so, well, Mike, you well, said you you write between forty and a hundred songs per year. Yeah, is that, is that what you said? So, it, I, I'm curious. Is, is that a matter of you sitting down and saying, "Okay, what inspired me today, or what inspired me this week," and then writing from inspiration, or is it just I'm going to just throw stuff against the wall? I'm going to make a song happen. Like, how much of it is natural inspiration? And, and if so, what vitamins are you taking so we can get those? <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. It's funny. None of it. None of it uh, is, is natural inspiration right now. I mean, I, what I do is I sit down. I mean, I mean, the the actual inspiration comes in when I'm while I'm. So what I what I do is is I will sit down and be like, okay, I'm gonna write a song every. I'm gonna write a song every day, Monday through Friday, um, for the next few months. And so, and so what I do is when I sit down, I force myself, like, even if I'm not inspired, even if I'm not, I don't want to do it at all. In fact, often I don't want to do it, particularly when I've got, when I've got 30 songs in the can and, and I know I've got, I've got 14 or 15 really strong ones. Um, I, I've, I, I'm disincentivized, to, you know, like I'm like, I've already got, the, I've already got enough music for an album. Sure. Um, and so, but, but I, but for me, it's, it's a part, it's a discipline, right? You have to sit down and, and just, and so what I'll do is I'll just sit there and I'll, I'll noodle around with the guitar and I'll noodle around with ideas or lyrical concepts or kind of, kind of what's been going on in my life. I'll, I'll look at, you know, what are things that are making me, what, you know, like what's happening in my life that is something that, that for me, um, is, is affecting me emotionally and I'll try to write to that and, and, and event, and eventually I will figure out some sort of chord progression or I'll come up with some ly- lyrical idea and that will be the thread through which I tease out the song. And so, and so usually, usually I can, it, I, it's, a, it's about a six hour process. Sometimes it happens a lot faster. Sometimes it's a, it's a, it's an eight or 10 hour process, but, but usually it's somewhere right, right around six hours. I've got a fully completed song. That's um, interesting. What's your favorite song that you've written that way that didn't come from any inspiration? All but it was like, I'm just going to write it. I'm going to write it right now. What's your favorite song? You think? You know, that's that's. It's like saying, "What's your favorite child?" You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have yeah. a favorite child. Oh, do you? Okay. Do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Parents uh, are lying well, if they say they don't. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's yeah. That's that's the uh, you know, but. Uh, uh, or, or I guess I guess it's it's like you know by saying by picking out one I'm diminishing the others you know I don't want them to get upset with me uh, no um, <laughs> you know I, I in fact I, for me for me it's always the kind of the newest stuff I'm I, I've been writing so I, uh, so I've got a new song called Out Till Dawn um, and it's funny uh, I, I love all my I, 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 I well when I write a song I can never tell if it's good I, I mean I know. 
I, 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 because I've been doing this long enough, I'm, I'm, I'm good at being able to identify this is a catchy, this is a catchy melody. These are lyrics that are honest and true. And then, and then I have to take it to people and, 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 and then see their reaction for me to be just determine whether I actually like the song or not. You know, like, <laughs> like I'm, I, I, like my skin That's has gotten dangerous. so thin. I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy. And, but the good thing is, is I write enough songs that uh, I usually end up with a handful that people like, you know, because it's, yeah, it's my, the way my whole process is so backwards <laughs> and I've got, and, and the more I do it, the thinner my skin gets, you know, so but um, that's really interesting because other people like, OK, for myself, like I write stuff and I'm like, OK, this is just purely for me, whatever I like. And if other people don't like it, well, they just don't get it, man. Yeah. But yeah. at the same time, I'm not supporting myself with music. So I, I actually it's a very interesting process. And, 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 and that's, and your perspective is probably the healthiest way to, way to <laughs> approach it, you know? And the thing is, is it like, and I wish, you know, I, 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 I wish I could, I mean, and it's, it, for me, it's, it's a, it's sort of a, the, the response to the circumstances of, you know, cause when we first started, we had really, we, we, we had some wild success because Grey's Anatomy adopted the band and they licensed, um, I think like nine or 10 songs and two of them are song wait and, and I hate everyone. They kept relicensing and they kept using that whenever they do a recap episode, they would use those songs in some part of the, of the recap episode. Um, hmm. and, and, um, and so, I didn't know and they did so, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so like, so I think, I think that the to all total, I think we're on crazy anatomy episodes like 16 or 17 times, you know, so that and but that but and for the most part, it was just all, it was just the first you know couple records, um, and they did license one song from the third record and then and then one song from the fifth record. But but it was it was um, so we had this like we kind of established this sort of international footprint really early, and then and then for a long time all I did was just see that footprint slowly but surely diminish, you know, and. Um, and so, and so when we first started putting out records, you know, and we were, our publicist was pushing the records, um, you know, people were, were very responsive and, and we were getting great write-ups and it was, you know, and I was like, oh, great, we're a legitimate, ba le legitimate band. And, and then, and then as, as the, you know, each subsequent record was sort of like less well-received and, and our record label at the time was spending less money putting out the album or, or, or promoting the record. And so, and so for me, it was, um, you know, when, when we would get a review and someone, and, and again, people, people didn't give the albums any shrift. Right. So, so they would, they would, you know, so someone would like, this is a, a, an example I bring up often in my stream, but someone's the, like the opening line of their review was just because someone has a, a, a cello in their band doesn't make them cool. And, and, and I was like, and, 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 and we have a viola player in our band and it's in the liner notes and it's part of the, like, they didn't even read the bio, you know, like, so we sent them this record, they, they shat on the record and they didn't, you know, and, and they didn't even read the liner notes, like they didn't do any homework. Yeah. And then they went in and, and sort of eviscerated the record. And, and that, and, it, and that whole process for me became, got to be really demoralizing, you know? So the thing is, so, so now, so now I've kind of like, so, so, so the, so even though my skin is very thin regarding that kind of stuff, people, people with a public facing vehicle for, for, for basically demolishing my records, I, I don't like, I don't like giving my music to those people, you know? Um, but the thing is, is that, but, but I know, I, but I know this is why I'm on the earth. Like, like this is, I am, I am here to write songs. I'm here to take my life, document it in song. Um, and but as a working musician and one who receives royalties from licensing stuff, yeah. you know, I've got to wonder like how, you know, there seems to be a balance of both having fans, you know, that appreciate mm -hmm. you and your music as like an art, real yeah. fans. Yeah. And then the industry side of it where here is a catchy pop punk infused song that could, you know, be an opening scene song. And it's like, you know, at what point did you ever feel like you were starting to shift over a little bit and having to like worry about, is this going to translate well to trying to market it for licensing? You know, in fact, that's your, that's your, your, that's very funny. Cause that, that question came, that, that, that argument has come up many times during the, particularly when I, when we were working with a record label, um, because I've always written, I've always written kind of what turns me on. And I've always written like, like I, I for me, the, 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 for me, this is art, 
right? I mean, I mean, it's it's my art. I'm I don't look at it as a vehicle for for generating revenue. I don't look at it as a product. This is this is me interpreting my world and saying, hey, this is my experience, and giving it out to other people, and and in the hope that it will it will resonate with people who either share have a similar shared experience or people that just want an, a glimpse into a life that's similar to mine. You yeah. know, and and you know, and that's and 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 it, and it really. And so the, our, it's very funny because that song "I Hate Everyone," our record label didn't want that song on the record. They thought it was way too negative. Um, <laughs> yeah, and because uh, you know, and, and I'm like, I'm like, that never- song is brilliant. And actually, it's very funny because you know I knew that song years ago before I even knew who Mike TV or Mike TV Live was. You know, yeah. that song was on a Grey's Anatomy soundtrack. Yeah, as a yeah, CD yeah. mix that ended up in my in my car. You know, and. <laughs> There's two things I want to talk about, actually, sure, that sure. I want to pick your brain about. I want you to kind of sum up three words that I think a lot of Twitch streamers right now who are getting into songwriting or who have written a few songs and they're performing them on their streams or they're performing them at coffee shops and they're, you know, they're excited about them. Yeah. But maybe they haven't pursued these three words, licensing, publishing, and distribution, or maybe four, copyright. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Right. You know, a sure. lot of people yeah. start writing and they might have 10 songs and they're playing them and they might want to record them. Yeah. Can yeah. you kind of sum up like the beginnings of all the business, the yeah. evil business? What do they need to do right now, Mike? Yeah. So the, so the first, so the first thing is, is just write a ton. You know, the thing is, is it just get in the practice of writing, writing because every time the, like every Every song that you write is another is another bullet in the you know in in the chamber of what you you know is is the thing that you get to use to like let people discover your music and fall in love with your music. So so the, so the more you're writing, the more likelihood that you're gonna you know that that that's those songs are gonna key in, and and you know and sometimes the thing is that sometimes you need to like uh you you're you're it takes a while for you to develop your particular singular sound, you know? So, so if you feel like if you're writing, if you're writing and you feel like, um, you know, these songs are not, you know, they're not where you want them to be. Don't, don't, don't get hung up on that one song, finish it and move on to another one because it like any, like, like learning to play an instrument, the more you write, the better and easier it becomes. And the more, the more, able you are to drill into your personal truths, you know, and, and that's, and that for me is, I think the thing that makes most, the great songs great is that they're, that they're tapping into something that, that is a truth that we all share, that we all go, yes, that's, ex- that's, that's exactly, that's exactly right, you know, and then, and then once you've got, once you've got, a, 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 you know, enough songs that you've, or I mean, and even if you got your first song, now there's a lot of different ways that you can actually get, get that song to, into the market um, and get that song in front of people that, that might be interested in licensing it. Um, and and a lot of those ways are um, are are literally. I mean, the really troubling thing, and this is why, like for the the first thing, the first most important thing about being a musician, and particularly being a songwriter, is you gotta love it. Because the thing is, is, is right now the whole thing is stacked against you in so many different ways, and it's a really difficult place. It's a really difficult world to negotiate, and 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 do it in a way that that's going to benefit you like financially and, 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 and grow your, I mean, and that's one of the beautiful things about Twitch, right? Is because the thing is like, it's this little microcosm. There's lots of people and and it's, and the community is awesome and everybody supports each other. It's not like that. Like, even if you're in a band and just playing around town, you know, um, but uh, it's, it can be, it can be a difficult place to negotiate, but there are companies that will, that, that will uh, like, if they like your stuff, they will go and represent it to music directors. They'll represent it to, um, uh, you know, to, to people that, that, you know, to commercial producers and things of that nature. And there, and you can find them. Um, I don't, I don't actually use, well, actually that's not so, uh, I I should say this, like, let's say, let's say I wrote a song. Yeah. I'm very proud of it. And I'm, I'm playing it a lot, like on my stream or in a coffee shop. Yeah. What, what would you suggest the first thing I do? Would it be copyright? And how would I go about doing that? Or, or what would you suggest even before I even start pushing my song out to people? Sure. Like what's, a, what's a safe step to do um, as a first step? Okay. Or do you need to copyright it to start no, pushing would, it so out? That's, that's the thing. So uh, you're automatically under copyright law. The moment, you're, the moment you've penned that song, it, it, you're basically covered by copyright law. However, 
The thing is, is if, if somebody wants to dispute that, if someone wants to say, I wrote that song, the thing is that you're going to, like, the best way for you to protect yourself is for you to have a timestamp recording of that song, or you can, like, like in the, in the, back in the, back in the, the back in the pre-internet days and the, and the pre-recording in your, on your own days, you know, you could actually take the chords and you could take the, the you could basically take the lyrics and you, and if you knew how to write music, you could, you could actually write out the melody and you could, you could mail that to yourself, you know, in a, cert, like yeah. a certified mail and then you would, ha- and then that would be your protection, you know, but, but all of that. I is still m- have letters with, with CDs inside them yes. for that reason. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And that's, you know, and that was like, and that was, that was like the poor man's way of, of copywriting yeah. stuff. But, but nowadays, nowadays, you know, you, if you just record something and you've got, and it's basically, you have a, you know, um, a, you know, even, even if you do it on your phone, as long as, long as there's a timestamp on it, you know, you're, pr- you're, you're, you're protected. But another great thing that, that for my money, I like, like this is, like if someone were to try to steal one of my songs now, um, like the thing is, is that like it, it's it, 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 they would have to be hard, they'd be very hard pressed to articulate how it is. Like my songs have a very, my signature stamp on them. Like they they sound like my songs. They they the, lyri- the lyrical perspectives are my songs. So so that's the other good thing about writing a lot is eventually you develop your modality of songwriting and that becomes signature it's like it becomes like it's like your face or your fingerprint you know so the thing is so the more you write the more you write the more the more you become the more your music sounds like you and the, the tougher it is for people to you know to 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 take own, to claim ownership of it you know but you copyright yeah. your stuff right yeah yeah so so yeah. basically i register all my stuff with bmi um, okay so, so that's your yeah, yeah. Because there's BMI and then there's ASCAP and you know yes. there's like a few different performing performing rights organizations, right? Yes, and the, and the, and so that's a great that's a great way to actually put on put on record that you've got you know that you've got that that this song belongs to you, um, and and the thing is is and you can you know the, again the the copyright law is you know it, it's in your favor as somebody that's created something the thing is, is the moment's created you're covered by copyright law. Um, but the thing is, is it like, but yeah, but having a record of it, like, so, so if you record it and just put a CD, put it, put it in a disc, you know, like, and, and, and again, like Dan was saying, like, you can't, you literally can burn a CDR, you can mail it to yourself in a certified letter. And then that, and then basically if anybody comes after you and comes after that song, you can be like, nope, here's, here's the, here's a recorded version that was done well before this person ever showed up, you know, and they can unseal that certified letter and, and they can listen to it and be like, yeah, you own that song. So they're I'm all, still, I'm still waiting for that moment to be like, oh yeah. And like open up the envelope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's why I always say, like, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I, I hope that day comes because that means that I have a song that's, that is valuable enough that someone wants to steal it. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. this stuff's really important, though, because we're literally as live performers putting all this stuff out there. And I mean, I haven't actually up- updated my catalog to include any of the stuff that I've that I've written like over the past year and a half that I've been streaming. And, you know, it's like if you think about it, all the future man controversy, you know, um, mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure if everybody, you know, is aware, but future man gaming streamer on Twitch um, and now after he's reached popularity, he's sort of, you know, suspiciously a a Netflix series came out, Future Man. Oh, (laughs) really? Yeah. um, That kind of blatantly rips off a lot of his, uh, you know. Was it Hulu or Netflix? I think it's Hulu. Uh, Is it Hulu? I I haven't, I'm not not absolutely sure. Is it Hulu? We we should look it up really quick. I'll look it up. I think it's Hulu. Okay, well... In any case, that's like one example of a way that somebody who creates content on a platform like Twitch as an independent person without, you know what I mean, can be yeah. majorly ripped off and copied. And so yeah. if somebody does come up with a good hook or a good good idea or something while they're while they're live streaming and they're just a little guy, you know, yeah. like <laughs> what what sh- what should we be doing to cover our tail? And and well, you know, and the, the funny thing is, is is it, is it like uh, again, even so, if there is money being, if there's money, so if that show, the thing is, so he's got a great case, right? So he, his name is Future Man. If they're if they've after, if they've actually, it is Hulu, tr- by the way. Yes, it is Hulu. Thank you very much for that. For, yeah, for correcting I, that, I remember seeing that, and I was like, "Yep, yep." I had incorrect <laughs> news. Please detract that, right? So we're, <laughs> we'd well, okay, like to so make a correction. <laughs> let's say uh, you know we got copyright in your song. You know is protected. It's yours. Let's yeah. talk dis- distribution. Let's say you so, wanna you wanna get your song out to the you know the different platforms where people could can hear it. Yeah, yeah and, and at places that would be good for you to push as a live streamer too. 
Yeah, well, and that, and that's and so and that's the great thing. I mean, I mean, that's the awesome thing about this day and age, right? Because because the thing is, is that, like you have all of the, you have all of that at your fingertips. You don't you don't have like you don't really have to go to it go to a nice recording studio. Now now obviously, you know you, there are all, there are, there are advantages and disadvantages to everything. You know, um, so but the thing is, is that yeah, you could you could literally just you know use Reaper and record your record. You could then go to a, an online distributor like. Uh, CD Baby or or TuneCore or the, I mean and there's myriad of them. Um, you you could get you know through them you could actually put your record out and get it into Spotify and iTunes and Tidal and all the legitimate streaming and 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 uh, and Amazon like all the places where you can buy digital music. Um, so you can bypass you don't have to you don't have to actually even generate physical CDs um, or you can use Kickstarter and you can generate a you can do some fundraising and then and then use those funds to actually put together a physical CDs and you can get them out you know um, there's there's and there are there there's actually net, you can actually find um, a list of, of like sort of like small like local mom and pop uh, uh, music shops all across the country that will actually take things on consignment. So there's all sorts of different ways you can skin that cat in terms of getting your music out. Um, and and so the thing is, but again, like for for like, so I I always suggest like that that you uh, you know kind of do all of this stuff in baby steps. You know, I mean, just to make sure that you're kind of like you're you're figuring everything out and you're not spending a, a gigantic amount of money um, before. You know, you've got something that 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 you really feel is like. I mean, so or the thing is, when you write a when when you know when well, I remember when I first started writing songs, I was like, this is the greatest song ever. And then I go back to it, I look back on it, you know, like three or four years later, I'm like, that was an okay song. You know, um, so for me, for my money, um, like you know, it's it's just just doing it, getting feedback, playing it in front of people. When people when people are like, I love when people are singing along to that song, or like when or when they're going, I love that song. The thing is, is that like then you're like, all right. This I'm gonna I'm gonna hang on to this one. When you've got a, when you've got four or five of those, put out an EP. When you've got ten of them, put out an album. You know, and um and 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 again, the thing is, the key thing is, is it is it? Well, or, hold on. If if you love the album, if you love the music you're making, and you're not getting that kind of reaction, uh, then then and it, and you really lo- and and the way you're making the music is is awesome for you. Then don't change it. Don't. The thing is, because there are people out there in the world that will love that music, and it might be that the music you make is is really like targeted uh, to a very niche audience. But the great thing about the internet is you can find that niche audience. So, so the thing is, so there's always a there's always a little bit of a push and pull between this is the mu- I, I, this is the music I love, and this and these are the and this is these are the fans that I want, you know. So, but once you've identified those fans, you know, and you know, then then make music for you know make music for yourself, but also make sure that, that it's resonating with your audience, you know. And sometimes it takes a while to find that audience, but but just stick like- with it. Are there extra steps to getting your music on some of the more, um, I don't know, more popular platforms like Pandora or uh, Spotify? So, so all of them except for Pandora, it's pretty easy. Um, the like, you basically, you just need to find an internet distributor that actually can that can handle. You know that has relationships with with all of these services. So, um, CD Baby's one. Uh, the reason so uh, the, one, the reason why I would I would recommend CD Baby is that you put it up, if you put it up with them, you don't you. It's I think it's like a one time fee. It may not even be a one time fee. I, I haven't done I haven't used CD Baby, but I do have a ton of friends that do. Um, and then basically they just take a little a little piece of every sale, and you, but yeah. you, you you don't ever have to pay another dime. So you put it up there, and then it's it's just there in, perp- in perpetuity. And every and every album sale, you get your your percentage, which is significantly larger than if you were going through a record label. And then and yeah. then CD Baby takes a little percentage. You know, um, I use TuneCore because I, I th- and and it, and and probably to my detriment, uh, but but my my but I I'm always the optimist. Um, the, the TuneCore takes no money, but I have to pay every every for every album I have in stores. Uh, I have to pay a, an annual fee to keep them in those stores. Um, but the reason why I like that is because every now and again I will want to go back and secretly change some stuff on an album, and I can <laughs> I can then I can pull it down and put it right back up, and you know no one's the wiser. So, jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now what about uh, the the two words uh, licensing and publishing? Because okay, yeah. I've heard yeah. a, a few streamers, you know, that have talked about songwriting on stream and every now and then they're like, I really don't know what publishing means or licensing, but okay, yeah. And so, I, so the, I, I think a lot of people coming into songwriting, those two words are kind of scary. Yeah. How and, do you self publish too? 
and that's well the thing is, is and so so the so the the so and this is and this is really where a lot of people if you're not touring this is where where most songwriters are making a de- like this is where most people are, are making a living wage right um so licensing is awesome and um and licensing basically the, and and licensing and publishing are, are both are both in, in, like uh, in, inter interlinked um the p- publishing is publishing is the basic underlying copyright of the song right so it's it's the melody it's the lyrics um basically the only things that you can copyright in a song you can't copyright a riff you can't but but you can't copyright um a uh you know you, you can't copyright unfortunately dan you can't like drum yeah. you can't copyright drum beats you know but but you can copyright a melody and and the lyrics and 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 um and basically and so that's so the person that wrote those it, now if you're in a band the person that wrote those songs can they that person can actually say you know what, I'm going to share the copyright I'm gonna, the publishing with everybody right so when you when you register your song with BMI or ASCAP or any other uh, performance comp, you know, performance organization across the planet um, uh, you are you are you get to de- you get to des- designate who the the publisher publishers are or the the copyright holders are you know and there there's there's two and this uh, this is where it gets a little bit complicated there's two there's two sides of publishing. You, there's the writer's portion and there's the performance portion. And, yep. and, and the writer's portion is basically that, that usually is held by the actual person that wrote the song. But, but like Nirvana, uh, you know, even though Kurt Cobain wrote those songs, he, he, he ascribed, uh, uh, you know, the writer's share to, to both, you know, to both Dave Grohl as, as well as Chris, you know, uh, Nosov- Novoselic. I can't, I've never, I can never pronounce his name, last name, but so, so, um, so the thing is, so, 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 you know, if you're, if you're in a band and you want to share your, and if you're the person that wrote the song and you want to share the writer's portion of the, of the publishing, you can, and you can share it with anybody, you can put down, you know, who, anybody you want, but for the most part, um, for the most part, the way most people do it, you, it, the person that wrote it gets the writer's portion. And then, and then if anybody contributed materially to the song, you might want to hand them a little piece of the performance share. Yeah. Now, now when you're dealing with a publishing deal, you typically, typically, what the publisher wants to buy is they want to buy the the performance share of the publishing. If anybody asks for your writer's share, they are trying to screw you. Um, and the thing is, and you should never ever surrender a portion your your writer's share ever. And that's and that's basically that's basically what ha- has you know back in the and in, in the real wild west days of music. Um, you know back in you know back when people were getting screwed over left and right, and why you you hear people sort of saying like you know like they wrote this song and they made no money from it. It's because they usually handed off the their writers the writers portion of their publishing. So. Um, so you never you never want to hand off your writer your writer share um, unless I mean if someone's like I'm going to give you a million dollars for you know, like and you and you want to sell it off but by all means you're you're totally but the thing is is that like you, you the only the the only thing you'll you'll hold on to that song the only way you'll participate in that song after that that payment is you know you'll be you'll your name will be the writer but the thing is that you won't sh- you won't share in any revenue generated from that song you know, but that could buy it, a lot of pizzas. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and so and so and so. In fact, that's so. Even with the publishing deal, the thing is, is like so. It, so if a publisher, if a publisher is buying, wants to buy your, you know, the publisher or the, the wants to buy the performance share of your song. Um, the thing is, is that like you know, usually they want to they want to pick it up in perpetuity, right? They want to they want to own a, they want to own the pub the performance share of that song forever and always. And if that's the case, the thing is that you want to make sure you're getting full value for it. You know, so, so often, often I, I have friends that will go and sign a $25,000 publishing deal and $25,000 sounds like a lot of money. But for me, I'm like, that's, that means 70 years from now, you know, if, if any of these songs really like, so, so it really is, it, it's, it's the kind of thing that you need to like really look at now for me, for me, you know, I might, I might be willing to sell a portion of my, of my publishing. In fact, in fact, with our record label, um, the deal that we signed with them, they actually had, they actually basically got half of our, the, the performance share of our publishing. Um, and so they, they basically, so, so they basically get the, uh, so if you look at it, if you, if you look at it, like the, the writer's share is 50%, the publisher share is 50%. So every time a dollar is made from one of my, a song that I've written that was on those first four records, um, the record label gets 25 cents out of every dollar. Um, and that's, and that's fine for me because they actually, you know, like, like I, I was starting out and they did a lot, they really did a lot, particularly in the early days, they really did a lot of good for the band. And so the thing is, so I'm totally willing and comfortable having them, 
um, hold on to publishing. Now, now there is, uh, uh, you can, 30, I think it's 35 years, 36 years after, um, after something, um, yeah, you can 35. retrieve. Yeah, you can you can actually you can actually go you can go to the publisher, whoever holds whatever portion of your publishing, and you can tell them I want my publishing back. Um, but you got it's a very small window. So the thing is, is like so if you if you're going to pursue this in earnest, um, you should definitely keep a track a uh, track of if you sell your publishing, keep track of when it is that you sold it because 35 years after that date, you can actually get your your publishing back. Um, but it's a small window. It's like, it's like a two-year like two window. you have like calendar alerts set up on your phone? <laughs> I do. I, fact, I, it's, yeah, it's on my, it's do. on, it's on so, my desktop. You can act it, there. It says in 2002. So, so 2002 is when I, my first one. So in 2037, I can actually <laughs> retrieve my rights. And so, yeah. And so, and then every album after that. Uh, so yeah. Now what about, <laughs> Brilliant. what about licensing? Yeah. So licensing, so so it's really funny. So so um, there are there are myriad ways in which you can go about getting your stuff licensed, and um, and then there, and there are myriad ways in which you, I would suggest tackling this. Like most well, people, kinda, most, can, can, can you explain kind of what licensing is in a nutshell? You, yeah, yeah. So so and this and this is how it's 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 linked to the the publishing side of things as well. So when someone wants to license one of your songs, let's say some some you know some television shows like we really like your song. We would really like to use it over this scene. You know, um, they will, they will, they will send you some paper and you say, yes, that you'll both, you'll negotiate a fee. Um, and in, in the negotiation of that fee, there will be all sorts of, um, you know, stipulations. So, so some like most broadcast networks like, you know, ABC and CBS and NBC, they actually pay royalties, um, every single time that that episode that your your song shows up in, they will pay royalties for as long as that 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 is being broadcast. You know, uh, pretty much anywhere. Um, cable networks often don't. So MTV, in fact, MTV won't even pay you for the the, the right of you. They think that them putting their putting your song on their show is publicity for you, and so they feel they, they don't they don't even feel like that they need to pay you anything, <laughs> which you know, which is ridiculous. You know. Um, so the thing is, so MTV each, doesn't pay for music. That's pretty funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's the, yeah. They're they're the worst. So, you know, and, and 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 I have friends that get that get stuff licensed on MTV all the time, and I, and I'm like I'm always happy for them because I see how happy they are. But I'm like, oh why? You know, so like, how do you even we, pitch the songs for licensing? So so that's so yeah. So the the best the best way. Or, well, no, hold on. The the way that most people do it is they go through the front door, right? So you find a company that actually will then like. Take like so, and that's a sort of a shotgun approach. So what happens is 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 that music supervisors have relationships with all of these different companies that are that are basically licensing companies, and these licensing companies have, you know, two hundred bands, and and they've got a they've got you know, ten thousand songs, and or and often it's more than two hundred bands, often it's five hundred bands, you know, and so and so a. Um, and so a music supervisor goes, Hey, I'm looking, we're looking for an upbeat kind of catchy kind of pop punky song in this vein, um, that, that run, you know, that, uh, that would work for this kind of scene. And then what, what the, what the, the licensing company does is that they shotgun, you know, hundreds of songs at them and they, you know, they've got some, and then the, the music supervisor has somebody that goes through all these songs finding possibilities, you know, and that's, and, and the thing is, is, and that's a, that, that's a totally legitimate way to actually get your stuff um, get your stuff licensed. But the thing is, is it's literally you're in competition with, you know, like, like, like every, for every single possible license, there's, you know, there's scores of songs being sent to them, not, not from just that one company, but from every company that, that those music supervisors have a relationship with. Sure. Yeah. There's, so what a, I, there's a company uh, called Epidemic Music. I don't know if, if, if you've ever checked that out, but it's for like YouTube videos, commercials, like, mm. you know, people can buy a license for like a single time use, or, you know, multiple uses, a, yeah. a license based on how many views it'll get. But you can literally go in and you can pick a genre, you can pick a mood, you can pick a tempo, a speed, how busy the song is, you know, yeah. if it's super crazy or just kind of chill laid back. So there's these distribution and, and licensing companies, like you said, that are up. There's a lot of them and there yeah, is yeah, a lot yeah. of competition. And, and, 
And it's and it's crazy because and that's and that's the that's the the the, the most amazing thing, right? The thing is, everybody wants music because music makes everything better. You put you can you can yeah. literally have you can literally put a just have a video of just a tree and put the right kind of music behind it, and people will be like, "That's an amazing," you know, music music <laughs> really. So everybody wants music, but everybody but they, but the thing is, is and everybody recognizes there's money to be made in music, uh, and so everybody kind of has their hand like hand, hand out before. So like. For you to make money as a musician, you have to be very careful of how you kind of like because there are people that that will that will say, "Hey, you know what? We we definitely want to we definitely want to participate." Like, in fact, there are companies that do this that license music, and they will ask for an exclusive right to license you, your music. They won't pay you any like so that means you can't work with any other companies. They and and sometimes they'll even ask to take like a piece of your of your publishing. You know, so the thing is, so you need to be very careful when you kind of start entering into this world, making sure that you're 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 ferocious ferociously protecting your your underlying copyright and you're, you're ferociously protecting your 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 publishing yeah, um, rights yeah and it's and it and it and it is crazy because the thing is it, it's amazing how many people like the, the, in fact the, i've had reports of people saying that like no 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 you can totally you can totally you know go and 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 we we would love to we'd love to represent your song if we license it then we'll just take fifty percent of the of the licensing fee. You take the other fifty percent, but but we don't. There's nothing else. That we we won't encumber your music in any any way, in any other way. And then when they and then when you get the contract, there's language in there that's that's completely the opposite of that. So the thing is, so so that so you kind of so so the so when you want to get into the. Um, you know, when you want to get into the film and t- like the licensing end of things, this is this is what I this is really what I would suggest you do. So, um, and this is sort of the backdoor approach. Um, first off, first off, uh, maybe reach out to people that you if you, there are shows that you really like, th- find like watch them and figure out who the, the editors are. Right. So this is this is literally how how Get Set Go has gotten most of our licenses is it because when it, when an editor is working on a show or a movie or something or a commercial. Um, before they have approved music, they will um, they will lay in their own music, um, and they you know because the thing is is because they want to as they're trying to sell their cut their rough cut to the producer, the music makes things better. So they'll lay in their own music to to, to sh- kind of show this is how this is kind of what I'm thinking for the scene, and, and and literally every like most of our major licenses came from an editor that we knew putting our songs in as during that rough cut. And and the producer going, wow, this is a really great song. Who is this? And then that person going, oh, this is a little band called Get Set Go. And man, you you should really check them out. And and so and that's that's literally how how our Grey's Anatomy thing happened. That's how uh, our Jack and Bobby uh, license happened. I mean, um, there's myriad myriad instances with just my band where that where that kind of thing happened. Um, so could you just cold pitch your stuff to an editor? Well, or so yeah. So the thing, so yeah. So the, so I, I mean the 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 thing the thing that I would do. So this again. So first. So first off, you know. So I would I would reach out to. I would find an editor for a show I really like, and and I would and I would and and this is like <laughs> and 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 uh, I would find an editor. I'd find an editor of a show I really liked. I would I would get to know their stuff. I'd, I'd get to know what, what kind of what episodes they cut together, you know, and, you know, and, 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 and I would reach out and I would start talking to them about like, Hey, you know, I see you edit the show and that's awesome. You know, and, and, you know, did you have, you know, did you have a hand in like, you know, uh, you know, I'm a musician and, you know, the thing is, and if you can strike up, if you can strike up a, a, a friendship with them or an interaction with them, the thing is, is, is it, and turn them onto your stuff. That's probably the easiest way to backdoor into a show. You know, um, you can totally is, tell right now that Mike spent a lot of time in the Los Angeles area because yeah. <laughs> I suspect that this is how a lot of things go down. And it is, and it's crazy, you know, and, it, and it's and it's something that no one will ever say to you. And the thing is, and it's funny because because literally, like even music supervisors don't want because because you know even music su- supervisors don't necessarily want you to do it this way because because you're kind of pulling them out of the out of the equation, right? Because it's usually the producers that are like, I really like this song, you know. So so the thing is, is that like so. Um, but so if it, we but have any it, listeners out there who are music supervisors who have been getting unsolicited <laughs> demos. Blame Mike T. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If suddenly, if suddenly your editors are coming up with all sorts of really awesome, uh, little known, so- finding little known songs, yeah, then yeah, you can come after me. I would like to shift gears uh, to talk about original music on Twitch. Um, yes. Kind of about your panel. Yeah. Uh, at TwitchCon yeah. and and kind of your thoughts and and hopes and dreams <laughs> of original music here. Yeah. On Twitch. It, 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 and it's funny because uh, because uh, it's 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 
So, uh, so for me, like the thing is, is that like uh, looking at looking at the amount of time that people spend playing playing their instruments and 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 just performing. And the thing is, like, I mean, and it's it's really awesome because Twitch is Twitch is creating a completely different dynamic of show that I really love. And it's it's funny. I want to try to import that to a live setting. I'm gonna I'm I'm in the process of trying to find a venue here in Austin where I want to I want to actually get a projector and project the chat up on the up on the stage, and then and then allow interaction between me and the, in the live audience and the chat audience and, and I will encourage people to actually install the Twitch app and then also hop into the chat just so because there is there's something about that that organic interaction and, and that is that is for me is is is, is really uh, rewarding and a lot of fun and it definitely feels more like it's a communal experience as opposed to just you know just just I'm a performer up here check out my stuff kind of thing you know it's a very awesome dynamic but um but again the thing is is like so for me with with specifically regarding original music um the, like the the chief takeaway for me is that is that the whole copyright issue is still being sort of resolved right the thing is is that like you know um you know like the thing is, is is certainly certainly twitch and anybody that anybody that has people playing covers and stuff like that like you know they they have to have they have to have come up with some sort of arrangement with ascap and bmi but the thing is is that but they're still open to lawsuits because ascap and bmi only represent x number percentage of of musicians right mm-hmm. so the thing is so you're not 100% guaranteed that that you're playing music that that isn't that is protected under the deal that Twitch has with BMI or that Twitch has with, with ASCAP or any of the other performance, uh, performance companies. Now, now most musicians, most musicians, if you're, if you're playing their song, it's, it's awesome and they love it, you know, but there are guys like Prince that, that take umbrage, you know? And the thing is, is like, and if they, and if they decide to go after you, the thing is, is they can, they'll, they can also go after Twitch. And so it's, so the thing is, so, so it's just a real, it's a real sticky wicket, you know? And, and right now, right now, it, again, because it's, because it's the wild west, everything, you know, everything is kind of like still being sorted out, but it's, but, but if, should the, should the shoe drop and should they, and should, you know, Twitch decide, you know, it's it's just it's just not in our economic best interest to 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 allow people to play other people's music without express permission of those performers, you know. And that's and the thing is, is like, and, and I'm fairly certain that if that happens, there probably will be organizations that will go out and reach out to per- musicians and be like, are you willing to sign up and say I give people license to 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 use my stuff whenever they want? Like that's and there might even be organizations like that right now, you know. Well, but, doesn't YouTube already, you know, have a system where if if the you know they can detect uh, yes. Based oh, Twitch what? does. Twitch does too. Um, yeah. Because if I do a drum cover and the song is, you know, isn't licensed or, you know, through Twitch, it'll get muted on a on a playback. Yeah, oh, but really? if I do an acoustic cover on Twitch, Twitch is none the wiser, you know. But if you put up an acoustic cover on YouTube, you'll get a you'll you'll usually get a notification through your email through YouTube that yeah. oh, okay, this isn't your song. You're not yeah. in trouble. You're just not going to make any money off this song. Yeah, yeah. basically, YouTube like, will actually let you split the revenue if it's your performance of someone else's. They've they've actually got it set up where you can go in. It, it'll let you know this is copyrighted material, and it'll say, "Do you want to turn off?" You know, completely, like not claim any of it, and then any any revenue from it's going to go to the publisher or whoever owns the rights to it. Or yeah. if this is you performing it, then you can receive partial revenue. Yeah. yeah, this brings up a really interesting uh, concept about whether or not long term Twitch is going to tackle this. Well, I, I remember it was a few weeks. Uh, it was, I think, it was right before TwitchCon. Uh, there was this big thing floating around Twitter where a broadcaster was playing music while they were just playing a video game, and I think they got dinged from you know a record label or a publisher about an artist not wanting them to use it. And it is a liability to Twitch. I think Twitch had to either time them out or do something as a, hey, we have to do this kind of thing because in the end, it is Twitch that is representing, you know, because they're the people who are actually broadcasting your content. Yeah. yeah, and and they can be they can be held liable, you know, and so and that's and so things so uh, so again so right now right now everything is kind of hunky dory, but you you just never know. You never really kind of know where this where this conversation is going to go, you know, and where yeah. where the laws are going to go. So so for my money, it's like it makes sense to like 
develop your own catalog of songs. So it show in the off chance that it does end up being that like, you know, they're like, Hey, you know, you can't, you know, you can't play covers anymore, or you can only play covers by these people, you know, or like, you yeah. know, that, that you've got your own material. And the thing is, is, and then also the thing is, is that like, it's just, you know, it, I, I say this a lot, but like every song that you don't write is a song that you have denied to the world. You know I mean? The thing is you've got a unique and singular perspective on the world. Take that, you know, take that and turn it into a song, you know? And, and the great thing is, is, is it like, there's so, um, like, like right now, there's so many, so many people. I, I mean, it's funny, like, like, I don't know if you guys know Trail Magic, but he wrote his first song and it was absolutely mind blowing. And I'm like, that's great, man. Like the thing is like, there's, you, there's such a, an awesome community here that like one of the, when I was coming up as a, as a, as a songwriter, I, I was good friends with, with a, with a couple, with a handful of guys in other bands. And I love these bands. And when we first start, started getting together, we would pass, we'd all of us pass a guitar around. We'd just hang out and, and, and party and, and we'd just, we'd pass a guitar around. And every single time I played a song, no one sang along. Like we'd all sing along to each other's songs, but every single time I played a song, no one sang along. And that drove me nuts. So I kept writing and I kept writing. And the very first song I wrote, which is, uh, that, that they sang along to was a song called uh, "The Girl Is Sleep- uh, Girl Is Sleeping," which is on my first record, and that was it was a, a transformative and mind blowing and awesome, thrilling, happy experience for me. That to this day still kind of gives me a little buzz, you know. And so, and and I I looked at I was looked at okay, what made that song work? And then I kept trying to iterate on that, you know. So the thing is, so it, it's always awesome to be playing music and writing music in the company of other friends and other people that are also writing music and also supporting you because everybody gets better. And when someone writes a brand new, amazing song, someone goes, well, I want to, like, I mean, that's every single time one of my friends brought in a new song. I'm like, I'm going to go write another, I'm going to go write a song, you know. I want to top that song, you know. And and everybody just got better. And, every, and so, the things, so the great thing is, is I thought that could only occur in person, but it turns out that no, there's like this, the community here on Twitch has the same vibe, has the same level of love, the same level of respect. It's, it's so mind blowingly awesome. Like for me, it's like, it seems like such a, such a missed opportunity to not be leveraging that towards generating your own original music, you know? Well, we've heard a few stories, uh, of how encouraging you were to a lot of, you know, new songwriters and, the artists here on Twitch at TwitchCon, like at 88 Bits House and, you know, how encouraging. And you were like, do it. Just come on, go, go, go. Well, and, <laughs> and that's every, really and, cool. Yeah, man. And everything, I mean, the thing is, but, and everything I've heard from, from people in the Twitch music community, uh, all of the songs I've heard, like originals I've heard are mind blowing. I'm like, that's, it's so great. Like, you know, so yeah. the thing is, is like, so for me, it's like, and, and again, and so the more you have the higher likelihood. Oh, and another thing I was going to suggest with regarding licensing, another thing you can do is go find go find, hop on YouTube and find people that are doing content you like and offer them your music for free. Be like, hey, do you want to like, I really love what you do. Do you want me to like, like, because the thing is, is that because what that's doing is it's creating additional exposure for your music and just ask them like, hey, at the end in the credits, can you throw my name, you know, can you throw my name in the credits, you know, or throw my name in the tags or, you know, or, or in the little show notes. Um, but the thing is, is like, so do that. Like you can do the same thing. You can do the same thing on Twitch. Like if, if there's somebody streaming something that you like that doesn't, you know, you can offer them your music. These are all of these different ways. These are all different ways in which to kind of get your, get the word out. And the thing is, is, and very often, you know, it's, it's like you build a fan, you, you, and this has definitely happened with, with get set go, you know, you have a fan that is 14 years old. They grow up, they get a job in the film and TV industry <laughs> and now they're 25 and they're like, Hey, I want to use this song, you know? So the thing is like, so that it's, has it's, not it, happened to me yet personally, but yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, but yeah, but you know, but the thing is, it's like, I, you know, and that is, and that is one of the advantages of being in the, uh, living in the LA area. Right. It's like, was, was that, was that a lot of the fans that we made in the LA area, they were also people that worked in film and TV, you know? Um, yeah, we, but the thing is, uh, we, I was in a band once and these kids loved us and their parents happened to be like, you know, executives and movie people. They're like, Oh, it's a cool song. And then they're like, Hey, can we use that for this next thing? We're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you never know who's listening or it did who... kind of make me laugh when uh, somebody asked my permission to cover one of my songs or to play over one of my songs. And That's it just cool, kind of, though. it kind of, it kind of made me giggle. Cause I was like, you didn't ask Ed Sheeran, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but, but actually, that makes me, 
Uh, yeah, man, it, it's, uh, and, and, and that is, it's, it, that is funny though. Cause the thing is, is that like, I, to me, I, I really wonder, cause that's, that's happened to me on occasion, you know, people will reach out and be like, Hey Mike, can I cover one of your songs? And, 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 and I was, I, I think that maybe cause it's, it's like, because they, they, there's this sense of like, we know each other. I know this, even if they don't know you personally, like I, I, I've spent enough time with this person that I feel like I don't want, you know, like it's, you know, Ed Sheeran, somebody I don't know, you know, it's just a you know, musician, you know, but, uh, but here's somebody that I feel like I've got an, an, a relationship with, you know, but, uh, but yeah, man, I, I, yeah. What would you, what would you like to see from the Twitch music community as far as more songwriting or more originals really, on truthfully, Twitch? I, I, I would really love to see this become like the next sort of like, uh, like an, a, another Seattle scene or a New York scene or so like everybody to start writing music and everybody to start like influencing each other and develop like in developing a sound that is sort of planet wide, you know, but, but, but specifically kind of built around this little microcosmic group of people at, that, that is constantly expanding and everybody's putting out records. And the, and the thing is, and I can, uh, like, I can definitely help people walk, you know, get through the process of like, I want, I've got to, you know, because the thing is, because you can start from, so you start with a, so- a song idea, yet now you have the song. Now, what do you do with it? Do you record it at home? Do you do, do you go into a, into a full blown studio? You know, what's, what's your budget? How do you like, there's all, there's all sorts of different ways to kind of skin that cat. And then once you've got an album, you know, or even an EP or even a few singles, you know, then you get them, you get them into stores and you put them together. And the thing is, and for me, I think it would be, it would be cool if there was a way that like, you know, you know, there, there's, there was like some common identifier. There's, there's like a label imprint, you know, like, like elephant six or something like that. I don't know if you guys know the elephant six imprint, but, but it's something that, that there's a bunch, there was a, a, a bunch of bands and a bunch of like that all, you know, on their albums, they just put the little elephant six thing and then identified them as belonging to the same community. And yeah. so if you were a fan of one band, you could go and look for the elephant six l- label somewhere else. And you're like, Oh, this is one of these, this is another band that's part of this community, you know? And it was a, a great way for people to find, you know, to, to, to basically support each other without even, uh, without even actively doing it. So, so for me, like I, I could imagine in, in a year's time that, that there is, you know, uh, you know, 15 or 20 releases all from Twitch musicians uh, that are part of this Twitch community and, and everybody's sort of, sort of supporting each other and pushing each other up. And so when someone does get, you know, a license or when someone does get a, a decent write up and they, you know, they're talking about, yeah, this is the community from which I did this. And we kind of, everybody elevate each other and push each, you know, propel each other and, forward. And I you mean, can already sort of see that happening. Uh, for instance, the luck music, their Rise and new shine. single Rise and Shine. I just saw Dan playing it uh, on his stream, song. drumming over it. And somebody who came through during a song request hour where I was just listening to music and talking IRL, like vlog style, requested it on YouTube. I look over and oh, it's them, you know, and, and a lot of times people will come and request other Twitch streamers videos like Mary Amber and uh, other videos that other folks have done it. So it is really interesting because that is already sort of, yeah, it's starting happening. to happen. It's happening. Yeah, Amen. it is happening. I do. Amen. I do it's wonder. It's funny because you go to like the Lux channel sometimes or even like Wax Wayne and, you know, people are, you know, will request Foo Fighters or, you know, Adele. But then when they're like, hey, should we do this song? Should we play Rise and Shine? And the whole chat just goes Pfft. like, yes, we want to hear that stuff, you know, like, yeah, you, you can hear, nuts. you can hear Coldplay or from a lot of different people, but you are able to hear their original song just from them and their channel. And people really respond to that. And it's, it is it interesting is exciting how it cross pollinates. Like I oh, rated yeah. Vargan one time and then Vargan put on my song and started playing cello awesome. over it. Awesome. And then he's harmonizing cello to the cello track that Jean B had laid down on my recording, you know? And so it is really interesting. Like for, for my album that I'm starting to to do my my like preliminary kind of s- sketching out and researching stuff, uh, I've got a a person who is going to compose four piece strings, and I'm like, well, you know, in the nature of of my career, I guess if that's what this is, yeah. and how I've kind of evolved, would it make the most sense to bring in four strangers that I hire into a studio? Or do I want to go the route where I actually like crowdsource my musicians from across the world? I would have, you know use what I mean? I would have like machine. You can use uh, the, people the in California machine. in like Slavic countries, like, you know, like yeah. just, so it that, is, it is interesting. 
And, and, see, it, well, and oh, go ahead. Sorry, Doc. That's all right. I was just going to say what's what's really cool to me in seeing all of that is it's all an indication of the strengthening of the music community as a whole, like what Mike was talking about with the elephant. It was Elephant 6, I think is what she said. Mm-hmm. Um, there really is that. We're, we're seeing that from channel to channel. And one of the coolest things to me that we just saw over this past weekend was an incredible turnout Oh, Not only yes. for the launch of Saving Music Live for the for the to raise money for charity. Not just the people that got involved for the launch, but as soon as more of our our friends in the music community heard about it, we got flooded on that Discord with people saying, Hey, I want to help any way I can. I want to be available to stream if you need somebody. I want to and it's all volunteer. It's not to make tips. It's not for anything except for this charity. Yeah, it all but, benefits Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation. Yeah. It's for free hugs. It's for free hugs. Exactly. And how, wait, how much do they make? They 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 had a goal of ten thousand for the month of December. And We're over I, I, fourteen like thousand now. Fourteen thousand they extended yeah. the goal to fifteen thousand yeah. because they, they reached ten thousand so quickly. It now was they're 12, at 14, I, I streamed yesterday. It was at like 12,000. And yeah. then I woke up this morning. And I'm like, wonder what it's at. And I was it's like, not oh far off from 15,000. So, yeah, but it's That's just, yeah, it's, from that, it's from that shared sense of, um, we all have, it's an affinity. We, we all are musicians. We're all part of Twitch. And especially after TwitchCon, man, it just seemed like things hit a fever pitch coming out of yeah, TwitchCon. And, you yeah, know? I kind of like you guys. You guys are... You <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys You're think, if anything, uh, looking towards the future, uh, and I, I want you all to weigh in on this, what do you think that Twitch might need to consider doing or doing better or, you know, et cetera, to, to help benefit musicians? Like, what are some key issues at the moment and what do you think they could do to resolve it or improve it for musicians? And it can be big, big ideas or even just simple stuff. Well, for, uh, I, I definitely think that if they were to add, if they were to introduce a little bit of like uh, some sort of interactivity uh, that allowed like so like like, I, like obviously I've, I've got the the sound effects in my in my stream, um, but the thing is, there's some like 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 ways in which like it, like you if you had if you had a, applause if you had things that could, that could allow uh, like or uh i mean it's hmm if there's if there's some way if there's some way for for a person to feel like their presence that, that they can make their presence known uh in the stream that that doesn't distract from the stream um i think that would be awesome um and i don't know i don't know exactly what i'm saying like like uh one of the things I, I was talking about with with a friend of mine was 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 figuring out a way to get a a a a, a call in so you could actually Type in a command, and and you could you could appear as an audience member in the very bottom, like kind of standing up and applauding. Yeah. You know, just so the thing is so so that that way you could you know so so if everybody's doing that and spamming that, then yeah. you have a whole audience appear and they're cheering. You know, and so that way it doesn't distract from the it, it it just it just adds to the show feel. You know, like little things like that. I think could could be a a big a big you know advantage. Which and with those the extensions, also- I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no! I, you were probably going to say the same thing I was going to say. I was going to say that's probably stuff that's going to get developed, like that developers and independent people will probably bring to Twitch. What? Yeah, we just need to find a developer to do that because with yeah, the exactly. extensions, <laughs> there's already like the little creatures, you know, that walk across the bottom of the screen, and you can type commands for your little creature. And so, if it was just like audience members, where if you typed in exclamation point, you know, applaud or clap or something like that, it would make your person even without without sound. If it just would make your little silhouette stand up and do like that, you know, like you yeah. were just saying, yeah, Mike, that would actually be pretty cool. And and the technology's there now to support that. We just got to find a developer to write us a little uh, a little extension program. Yeah, I think I think and and then and then if to move a little bit beyond that, uh, then then you you know and then if you're able to actually customize the silhouette, you know the thing is like so you can so everybody can show up with their own unique thing and it moves between between streams. The thing is like so then like just it's just ways in which to get people. I think. To a, ch- a chance to feel take some ownership of the show for me because yeah. for me I think that's like the biggest that's what it's about thing, with Twitch you know? and live streaming is that viewer engagement mm-hmm. I kind of wish that Twitch I feel like the way that they could support us longer term would be to be more upfront or develop a better system for sorting or to categorization and mm. really more clearly define where music fits in and take action you know in in some terms of being able to kind of you know help promote us a little bit or at least you know if you look at that uh twitch music twitter account 
that hasn't really been updated in a while. And, you know, with, with you see a lot of people hanging out on IRL the entire time. Some people are on creative. Some people are on music. Like, I feel like it's really kind of hard for us as a community to say, this is where you'll find, quote, us. Yeah. Yeah. I think if we need a live music category because music by itself has a lot of DJ stuff and which is great. It's music. It's cool. You know, if it fits music, man, but that's a I great idea Doc. to have a live music category. That. And then honestly, I, I think the creative section as a whole has grown enough. I know that we've got um, Twitch representatives, you know, that, that are part of the creative team. Honestly, I think in this next year, the way the music is growing and the musicians are flooding to Twitch at this point, I think we're going to need a music community manager that oversees the the music Twitter account and things like that, that can really be an encouragement, but also give some guidance and have the connection directly to Twitch. And um, so I'm going to put my application in the mail, Twitch, if you're listening. <laughs> I know. I've been thinking that for weeks. Like, hey, if they ever advertise a position for that, I'm putting my application in because, you yeah. know... In we fact, in we fact, already that, had to build this without them, if that exactly. makes sense. And, and in fact, that was that the the uh, like the thing that the show at the Old Town Pub at while well, TwitchCon, they, like they could they, there's a huge opportunity for them to be like, hey, we've got Twitch streamers in Los Angeles. We've got, I mean, there's certainly if you live in if you live in neighborhoods where there's you know there's not, but if you live in major cities, it's entirely possible that they could be doing a a concert a month, you know, that's a Twitch music concert, so you can kind of get people out and give give a little kind of rallying points across the country for you know so. Because I mean, if I if someone were to do something in you know in Dallas, I mean, I would I would definitely be up there, you know, supporting it and being a part of it if, if possible, you know. So things they're definitely they're, I definitely think there's ways that they could do uh, other things to like kind of like get, help galvanize the you know the Twitch music world uh, both online as well as outside of that. You know, yeah, TwitchCon was, you know, they, they there were some things that were present there, such as the musician participation in the talent show and on the Tiltify charity stage. Uh, but I think that Twitch probably got a lot of feedback from folks. Like, Mike, that night we, we had the, uh, the gig. The folks that were not there were mostly at the, the Twitch party on the Queen yeah. Mary. Yeah. You know, they didn't have any music. Oh, did they see? Yeah, see that? See that? At yeah, all. And that's, yeah. no live and that's, music, no, no music in the. What I mean, isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah, that, that's you know, and it's funny because I actually reached out. I actually reached out to Twitch, uh, the Twitch creative people, and I was like, "Hey guys, you know, like I'm putting together a show, and like, do, do, is there would Twitch like to be involved, or would you like to even just like?" provide us a banner or something so that, you know, we can like, you know, it, make your presence known uh, and, and they didn't get back to me. So I definitely think that there's like, that there's missed opportunities on, from that perspective that I think, you know, um, they, you know, th that, I mean, just, just the idea that like, if they were to host a, um, like, you know, like if, if someone were to, if like, if there was a promoter or somebody actively putting together like one show a month in sort of all the major markets across the or not, or not a one show a month, but like maybe they would do 12 shows a year each month. They did a show in a different market. The thing is, is, is that they could definitely do a little bit of branding with, you know, working with that venue. Hey, this is a Twitch music thing, you know, and the thing is, is like, and that's going to build, that's going to raise awareness, particularly if they're, you know, if it's strong performances, the thing is, is that the local press is going to take notice, you know, and the thing is, is it like, and, and all it does is continue to build the Twitch brand and build up the Twitch music community. Well, at this point, the community has built itself and done all these things, yeah. you know, for charity as well. And, you know, there, there's a lot of really talented musicians doing doing video game music, doing original music, doing really unique covers. You know, it, like there's a presence there. There's value there. It's just whether or not there's a way for that value to add something to Twitch. And a lot of times yeah. I do see promotion on Twitch's side when it's video game music, you know, when it's still very like gaming centric. But, you know, with the introduction of IRL, there's even more kinds of content that was never on Twitch before. Twitch might at some point, you know, some people have said maybe IRL is just supposed to be like a self-policing place. Like Twitch is kind of handing over the keys to the kingdom to, and just like, you know, you could put whatever you want on Twitch now, but at some point, how are we going to show the value that the music community has as a whole and highlight artists that don't want to go over to YouTube? You know, how are we going to, to have it be a viable place for people to come and find, you know, original music and find music to license? You know, I'm just, yeah. I think, uh, I, I kind of have two hopes, I guess, like the next coming year or 
how the future holds. Doc, what was the name of the young man, Cords and Cole, or Cole and Cords? Cor- yeah, Cords and Cole. It, the guy just, that we kind of discovered I'm, the other night. I'm going to use him as an example. Uh, people like him are taking the time to, you know, say, okay, I know about Twitch. And he prepared, he got an interface, he got a nice mic. And before he even went on, he made sure the production value was great, right? Doc was like, go check out this guy. He's great. And I logged in and, you know, sometimes for someone's first stream, you're like, okay, you know, they're probably going to be really far from the mic or it's going to sound weird. It was flawless. He did an amazing job. It was great. Really cool. Awesome. And I think the influx of people like that, how many singer-songwriters are in America right now? Or the world, for that matter. Yeah. And I think people are discovering, hey, Twitch is here. It's not just for games. You know, I think over the next year, the music community, I think, is going to double in a good way. You know, we're just going to get these amazing people. And the more people that come to Twitch as streamers or as music people, they're going to bring more viewers. You know, they're going to pull more people from other places. And I think that's just, it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. It would also be cool to know about like opportunities such as being able to submit your original music for licensing in indie games, you know, things like that. Like that was a missed opportunity for me at TwitchCon was a game developer had emailed me uh, a month before TwitchCon and said that they had a virtual reality game. Uh, and were interested to know if it was something that I would want to do. They wanted to talk to me at TwitchCon, and I, I explained to them, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I don't really play games. I focus on music, but hey, if you would ever be interested in in having some of my music for any of your works, like, let me know. And she actually emailed awesome. back and said, I would really be interested in that, but for the project we're working on now, it's more upbeat. We know you do more kind of ballad sort of stuff and that might tie in nicely for upcoming thing. But you know, that was, that's something pretty cool that I could see the community sort of like integrating, you know, amongst itself. I already want to go to Twitch visual artists to help me with concept art for my album, you know? So it would be interesting even for Twitch to provide a venue for that. Like, you know, a, classifieds board you know uh, seeking kind of thing i don't know well in fact in fact you, 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 the 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 manager sort of the, the the twitch the live music manager that that, that doc was mentioning like the thing is like yeah there, there definitely seems to be like there i mean there there would be you would think that there would be significant opportunity for um for someone like because you could actually have someone that was cataloging you know who's streaming original music, or who, or who's able to compose stuff on the fly, and then representing that out to the world. Because the thing is, is that like you know, and and then figure out ways in which to get get the Twitch name, you know, so that so that Twitch is no longer just a place where you know where okay, here's a it's a ve- it's a vehicle for streaming, and 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 it just happens that a bunch of music people have gotten together and are streaming music, you know. Instead, it's like they're taking they're taking charge of that and be like, yeah, we're, we're going to place where, where original content is created. Cause that, that was the idea behind creative, right? Like yeah. we're going to let people come up with, with original stuff here and you're going to be able to see their process. The thing is, is that like now, what do you, now once that, once that process is done, once there's something created, what do you do with it? And you would think that Twitch would be like, cause it, if I could see if there were, if there were, you know, if there's some movie and they use three songs by Twitch streamers and those Twitch streamers are identified as Twitch streamers, that's going to be huge for Twitch, you know. Um, that's going to be huge for building that brand and, and also and also bringing bringing viewers in and bringing users in. So, yeah, it's it's still the Wild West, man. The yeah, other, the other thing uh, that I'm very excited about um, is, and it's inspiring to me as a streamer too. What's I don't know. I'm I know. Pretty much everyone by now has seen it, but Scene of Action's new setup. It was, mm. what is it now, about two, three weeks ago, he unveiled it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the production quality, the lighting coordination, the camera angles, the moving cameras, you know, it's original music. He's choreographed everything. You are literally going to a live concert production of the caliber of like Muse or you know, Radiohead, you know, it's, he's programmed the lights and everything in Reaper and, and all that stuff. Like that level of professionalism is on Twitch and it's only going to get better. You know, 
Yeah. It's inspiring to see that. And what I think artists, what bands can do, I think we're going to see a big influx of live bands instead of saying, hey, why are we touring across the country for months on end, spending all our money when we could invest in a really nice studio, build a production level thing every night, come out or three nights a week. And, you know, I there's such a platform for so many things here that I think is just going to get bigger and bigger. And if Twitch, I think even gave a little inkling of a push that it's there. I think so many artists don't know that Twitch music is here. You know, people know Twitch from gaming, but I think if they kind of advertise, hey, if you're an artist, why don't you why don't you try coming here? Because Twitch started out with gaming, right? In the beginning, I'm sure there weren't that many people streaming games, but probably within a year that they advertised, why don't you come stream with us? There's probably like a million people, right? They they were just in TV. Um, and they, and on, and Justin TV was sort of like a Ustream. stream. They just allowed, they allowed anybody to kind of do anything. And then, and then they, they had, they developed a really strong gaming community, people streaming gaming community. And they decided, oh, we're going to focus on, on exclusively this. So then they, they changed it to Twitch and they only allowed games for, for the first handful of years. And then they kind of, they became the, the dominant player in the market and they're like, all right, how do we grow? And so that's when they opened up Twi- Twitch creative. I mean, once um, Amazon buys you too. I yeah, mean, Amazon, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, yes, video games are the largest, you know, entertainment industry. It's huge, yeah, much yeah. larger it's than massive. the film industry. You know, there's, it's massive. So obviously it's got that going for it. But, you know, I feel like it's no coincidence that Amazon buys Twitch and then a lot of different things start happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> a lot of different changes that, that came to the site, a lot of different monetization methods and now content changes where it's sort of like, and not to say that content creators didn't ask before for IRL and for more of that loose format content, you know? Uh, but it's like, it's really funny because it goes so against what Twitch was like for a really long time, which was very, very like heavily policing content and content categorization. Now IRL is here and it's like, oh my gosh, what do we all do? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, it's exciting though. I really do think... It's going to pick up, you know, over well, the it, next year. It, and, I, and it's funny because I, I, because exactly what you were talking about, Dan. There will be a point in time when major bands realize, oh, you know, we don't we don't have to we don't have to get on the road and tour for for a year and a half to support a record. We could do the exact same thing from a studio, bring in pr- pros and make this thing look and sound amazing. <laughs> you know, interact with the audience and make it. You know, like and the thing is, is that like and and somebody is going to be the, the the vehicle by which they do that. So for me, it's like Twitch's opportunity. Like Twitch, it's a lost opportunity if Twitch doesn't begin laying the groundwork to be that be that vehicle because the thing is because there are i mean there's ba- there are bands with millions tens of millions of fans that would tune in to oh, watch yeah. you know like you two if you two was like hey we're gonna do we're gonna do a, a a summer music series where we play every you know we play five days a week for uh for a month and we're just gonna go explore our entire catalog of music the thing is you can't tell me that you're not gonna get 30 million people tuning in to watch that you know mm-hmm. if not more so, um, so the thing is, so at some point in time, someone, you know, someone's going to like all of the dots are going to be connected, you know, and, and, you know, and so Twitch is in the perfect position to take advantage of that, but you know, hopefully they do it. <laughs> yeah, We'll see. Yeah. It seems like YouTube really seems to want to step it up offering, you know, YouTube live and all that kind of stuff. And YouTube traditionally has been the place that music mm-hmm. is Facebook at, also, you know? Facebook also is in its infancy with their live streaming too. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are seeing potential. I was watching last night, um, 88 bit music had uh, a couple friends of, of his over. He had a singer and his, uh, one of his roommates is a drummer and they were just doing a, a thing called, uh, scotch and classics, right? They were just singing old classic Christmas music and drinking scotch together, just kind of having a good time. And the cool thing about it is it was such a great vibe. It was good quality as far as the audio and everything. Of course, these guys are all great musicians as well. And they had they were carrying for a long time anywhere from five to eight hundred viewers. Awesome. Amazing! And when I saw that, I looked at that. I'm going, you know, for a a non uh, international artist, you know, on right? some major yeah. label <laughs> to play for a room of five to eight hundred people. Mike, you oh, know yeah. that's that's a good. Cr- you guys all know that's that's a good crowd. You play in a 
that that's a venue, not just a bar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Amen. And uh, to carry that and just have that interaction and the fun. Of course, people were you know tipping and donating and things like that too. So it was financially you know lucrative for them. But well, in the plus comfort that's of their concurrent. own home. Concurrent. That's just concurrent at any given time. So think of the yes. thousands of people that have come in and out, wandered in and out during that stream. It really is only going to take so long before independent consulting firms or even, you know, Amazon itself figures out a way to bolster uh, influencers and, and and advertising and products. You already see Soylent, you know, Soylent yeah. is not in any stores. Yeah. Soylent is sold like exclusively on the Internet, on Amazon. Yeah. Who is Soylent taking out ads or is Soylent going straight to the early adopters, the the influencers, giving them free product to spread the word about Soylent? Because I tell you, I found out about Soylent from watching broadcasters I like, like Zombie mm. Unicorn and my husband watches It Me JP. And, you know, going to through all those influencers and having them use their product and then you know, it goes to trickles down to other broadcasters who have other viewers and, and on, so on and so forth. Uh, it would be interesting if a consulting firm or people who had relationships with music gear people put together a portfolio of different brands and had product placement. Like what if I could have just got a PRS guitar, you know, but yeah. it's very difficult to explain for somebody like me to just reach out to PRS and be like, hi, uh, I do stuff on the internet. Can I have, can I has free things, you know, <laughs> like, to them, they don't see that, you know, and I have what between 150 to 200 people these days. Mm -hmm. And that's over a course of like a four hour period. How many people mm -hmm. are coming in and out and how many of those people come constantly and know what kinds of gear I use, ask me for gear recommendations. So I think it's going to be a very, if you want to continue to make money streaming or figure out ways to supplement your income besides just tips, donations, yeah, cheers, things like that, you've got to get to that influencer level and figure out, they've got to figure out how to leverage that and musicians have to be smart to do it. And so I feel like I'm not sure what's going to cut the corner to get Twitch recognized to music industry people because it's also very hard to explain to them. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I <laughs> You know, it's funny because again, this the, all of this does to me sound like that's it's definitely the the kind of purview of a live music manager. You know, somebody that's somebody that's able to look at well, how do we we've got all these people creating a, a, a amazing content, um, whether whether it be whether it be covers or whether it be originals, whether it be but but all of this live music happening and it's awesome. How do we leverage that? You know, to yeah. you know, and it's yeah, it's crazy that that that, that, that it's crazy that they haven't. The, well, and you know, maybe maybe those discussions are happening. In well, I don't I, you know, know about I'll, you guys, but I don't want to reach out to PRS. You know, yeah. I I want somebody else. To, I just want to make good music. I just want to make content. I want somebody else to do that. Mm -hmm. I want somebody else to be the middleman. Well, I haven't you know? talked to PRS yet, but I have been <laughs> in contact with Focus Right and Novation, and um, was able to help. You know, Seth Drums TV recently got his first endorsement with a, a smaller yeah. company that hand makes. You know, they're all hand hammered you know um symbols you know it's a great great awesome. symbol company of course he didn't get them for free but but as an endorsed artist he got a he got them for like less than half i mean it was a, a yeah. really good deal for a full set of symbols so that's the kind of thing exactly the kind of thing that i want to see the music community be able to do and benefit from with having somebody, whether that's me or somebody else, I don't care who it is, but um somebody that can go on behalf of not just their channel but on behalf of the music community, on behalf of Twitch, and say, look at this movement, get in now. Mm -hmm. You know, now's the yeah. time. Start endorsing some artists that are that are influencers. You know, Stephanie, I know I remember watching when you got your loop pedal. It seemed like within three days, I saw four or five other streamers who were like, I ordered a loop pedal like RGS has. Yep. Yeah. You know? awesome. Loop loop pedals, microphones, mixers, guitars. Yeah. And not just me influencing other people to get the gear that they see that, you know, I am notorious at my local guitar center for ordering stuff. You know, ordering used stuff and everything, and then like returning it. You know, and, and oh, I'm always in making a return. Stuff. I'm always in making a return or an exchange because I have been so meticulous. How many loopers did I go through? And I opened the box in on stream, and I plugged mm. it in on stream, and I figured out how to route it all on stream. There's none of this. 
you know, kudos to that cords Cole gentleman who had it all gets has it all figured out before he hops on. But that's not how we do it around here. We, I only mama's only got four hours. Okay, let's get rolling. You know, yeah. so. But I think that that you know, at some point, uh, streamers need to be able to enable to enable themselves to go advocate for the value that having X amount of concurrence means and having people who by the time they're watching you on Twitch, this is so many echelons of higher context stuff, you know, first they're on Twitch. So we know that they're folks that are probably interested in video games, technology, yeah. computers, etc. They're on Twitch. How, how many folks on Twitch are also in the software industry or in, you know, in some sort of computer science industry or a lot of my audience, I know what they are. A lot of them are musicians, producers, hobby musicians, some professional people who do engineering. Like it brings in anybody who's interested in music across that platform. That's very valuable. You can pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to take out an ad, you know, just to establish brand relevancy, your name. Or you can go to these folks who have 200 people or, you know, even 50 people coming in and out constantly who are interested in music. Well, geez, I w I'm going to have him using a Yamaha keyboard or a yep. Casio. You know what I mean? It's the number I'm gonna one make rule of marketing. Be where your customer is that your competitor isn't. One thing that I would like to see Twitch kind of take to the next level is this gifts, gift scripts. Bleh. I can't talk today. Gift subscription idea which is great on twitch but i would love a physical like a gift card thing that has twitch whatever and that that people can buy but you could physically give it to someone that maybe has never mm -hmm. heard of twitch before and say this is a thing go go check this out and here's a free subscription you can use wherever just to get people you know like put them in grocery stores like oh i can get my olive garden gift card i can get oh, what, interesting. what is this what is this all about or like you know something like that i think would be really cool does anybody know is there is there actually a, a, like a twitch magazine not a physical magazine but do they have like a do they have like a twitch website that they, where they kind of report on I mean, yeah they, yeah, have they, a blog. they, they do all on? their blogging it's yeah a blog i think they blog on medium too don't they yeah like a lot of companies and stuff use medium these days and i know i see a lot of twitch blog things yeah. on medium because you could buy amazon gift cards i'm just saying amazon just saying yeah this is, this is true <laughs> it is it is really interesting uh Lots and especially to be in it right now, you know, like this is Mike, you've been streaming for quite a while, but now it's at this level where it's actually like a relevant thing to, you know what I mean? Like to, yeah, it's, to almost I mean, everybody. Like, it's been, it's been crazy. I've been trying to, I mean, I mean, I have so many amazing musician friends that would benefit so much from Twitch and I, and I have literally tried to proselytize and it's funny. The, the only people that really get it is when I get them to guest on my show or I'm, I, or I'm like, yeah. I'm like, or I sit down and I'm like, let me turn it on and let me walk you through it. But then it's funny. The thing is, is, and then often, often, you know, the, they're musicians, they're not super technically proficient. Often lots of them aren't like, they've got a laptop they've had, you know, that's like eight years old, you know? So the thing is, so, so then having like, explain to them that it's really it's an afternoon's worth of work to actually be streaming you know At the least. Is, it's not yeah. you know but but it's not you know but it's not like it's it's like you could literally you know you can start you can start with with low quality stuff and then just start upgrading over time but the thing is like the key thing is just get out there man well, especially like, now you don't they have, have to mobile. leave your house you know yeah yeah now you can yeah, literally yeah, yeah. get a microphone plug it into your phone if you want even a nicer mic that yeah. it's built into your phone and just go live yeah I mean, they and made that's, it you know, easy and so it's, it's crazy. Like, like, you know, it, it's, it is, I mean, it, I, I do think that, you know, it, it, again, it's, it's like, and even, you know, it's just a matter like this, we are still very early adopters of something that in, in 10 years time is probably going to be like de rigueur. I mean, I'll, I'll, I bet you there will be bands that, that will sell millions of units that will have never left their houses, you know, like they'll just be, and they'll be, they'll have worldwide acclaim and people will know their faces and they will have never, they'll never actually played. Well, outside I of their, sure their hope so home, for one. You know? Yeah. I don't like to leave my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Mike, it has been a pleasure to have you here today. I'm just thinking of editing a very long episode. Oh yeah. So I don't want to go too long, <laughs> but I mean, sure, we sure. can literally talk forever. We'll have to have we you really on again could. because the insight and just just the conversation and communication. Um, I hope people take advantage of 
you know what what you're talking and more original music on Twitch would just it gets me excited. You know, me Amen, too. Me too. And, and thank you guys so much. And and I, I do want to extend the invitation to you guys. Um, I'm doing a I'm starting a new podcast. It's it's launching tomorrow. Um, basically, and basically it's it's a, well it's it's a podcast slash uh, live stream, but it's. It's basically just a conversation with creators about creating, like, you know, starting from the initial concept and kind of like, like kind of talking about the process and talking about how we overcome obstacles and, you know, and all that kind of stuff and kind of like, just kind of get pretty knee deep into all of it. And, um, and so I, my primary focus is I want to focus on the Twitch creative community, but I also have a whole bunch of friends that are pros in the business, uh, in, in, in all sort of stripes though. So from novelists to animators, to, um, to, uh, to, you know, to, to, to rock and roll, like touring musicians. So, mm-hmm. um, but I do want to, I do want to have a, a real heavy Twitch music focus. Where can people find that and find you and all the, all the goodies? So, it's, so yeah, so that, so that's going to be on Twitch, you know, twitch.tv forward slash Mike TV live. Um, the, the podcast I'm still, so I'm, I'm still kind of figuring out exactly, um, uh, what I want, who I want to use to distribute that. I've got a bunch of friends that do, that do successful podcasts. So I think I'm going to go through them and kind of figure out the best way to, the best modality to get all that, you know, to, to the, you know, to, into the hands of people that want it. Um, but, uh, yeah. And then, and then, and then if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Mike TV live or Mike TV of GSG. And that's, uh, and that's, um, you know, that's the best way to kind of stay abreast of all of the developments. Nice. Very cool. Kind of going on. Good stuff, man. Thank you so much for being here, dude. Yeah, thank you guys so much. It really, really was a super amount of fun. Yeah. Who do we have next week? Doc, do you want to announce? It's very exciting. Is it, uh, I believe, is it, hold on, I'm pretty sure. Is it is next week too, guys? Yeah. Is it next week? <laughs> next episode, at least. I think Next episode. Yeah. Next episode, I believe we've got Matt and Corey from Two Guys, One awesome. Couch. That's right. Dun, dun, um, dun. So we'll be really excited to talk to them about the, the journey. Awesome, yeah. folks. Yes, yes, yes. You don't want to miss those guys, man. They are some of the kindest, big-hearted folks that I think I've met on Twitch. They're just they they love everybody and they're hilarious. It, it's yeah, like it's like watching two two brothers, you know, hang out. They <laughs> just kind of they rib each other a little, but they're great, you know, what they do. So, yeah, you don't want to miss that. It'd yeah, be a good absolutely. Time. Well, thank you guys again uh, for listening and check us out too. Um, at the Music Compod on Twitter, and leave us reviews too if you guys like what we're doing. Uh, wherever you're listening, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, all those places, rate us and review us. Tell us how bad we are. <laughs> <laughs> and tweet questions. In the yeah, meantime, please, please feel free to tweet questions, um, and we can ask our next guest, Two Guys One Couch. Please, what, please, or we can address them ourselves. Yeah, and you guys are the best. Okay. Have a great week, guys. We'll talk great to you. Week. Soon. See you guys. Bye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Mike TV Live performing his original song, 100,000. I got too many songs that I don't know how to play. If you give me 50 minutes, I'll play them anyway. Some will make you laugh, and some will make you cry But none will make me money, but I'll tell you that's alright Because I like to sing a brand new tune There's nothing better I could do And when I go, and when I'm gone I will leave a hundred thousand songs Say, so I'm gonna write some words and sing them anyway Some will make you cringe, some will make you puke But none will make me money, I'm telling you it's true Because I like to sing a brand new tune There's nothing better I could do And when I go, when I'm gone I will leave a hundred thousand songs Did it up?
pop 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 do 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 a jingle jingle bomb dig a dig a dig a lap a loop do 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 I like to sing a brand new tune. There's nothing better I could do. And when I go, and when I'm gone, I will.